So, it's the third Saturday of the month and I am on to page three of my concertina journal. This week I start bright using some gel printed pages and I also add a touch of pink. I might just get to like the pink. I will of course be grunging things up a bit. But I'll also be working on some little interesting pieces that will be added to the page this week. If you'd like to find out more, then keep watching. I'm Kylie Koo, mixed media artist, art journaler, book artist and maker of many things. If it's your first time visiting me, a big welcome to you. And if you've been here before, welcome back. Welcome to my studio. I'm starting off with a clean work table and it feels so good. I've been organising my scraps and if you'd like to see how I did that, watch out for the video coming on Wednesday. Here's my journal so far, the cover page and then page one and page two. And your comments on last week's page were so interesting because some of you saw a tiger up there, I think in that top right hand corner, I can see it now, and also a fox on the back of the page. Isn't that interesting that just through doubling up some stencil I created, without intending to, a tiger and a fox. So I'm going to name that page the tiger and the fox and I'll put a label on it at some point. But let's get started on this week's video. So starting off with the substrate, it's the same as I've used uh, the previous weeks and I'm going to take this gel print from a while back and add that to each side, just tearing off the white bits down the edges just now. Now this page has PM Artist Studio stencils on it. I can't remember the names of them just now but I will leave a link to their shop and if you desperately want to know the name of the stencils let me know and I will dig that information out for you. I'll put a link to the playlist for all the videos that I'll be making uh, for this journal and I'll put that in the description box. So just using some matte medium and I'm going to glue the gel printed page down onto that. Now I should say that the page that the gel print is on is simply computer paper so it is quite thin. I'm putting a layer of glue on both pages before I attach them together. Because the printer paper is quite thin it does start to curl a little bit but it's it's fine it's of a size that it's easy enough to to pull out so just trying to get those lined up as I've said before don't mind a little bit of overhang but don't want too much and I just use my palette knife to make sure both are fully adhered. And I then do exactly the same on the other side of my page. I then give both sides a quick dry. It doesn't need to be fully dry, but I just don't want it sticking. So once that's done, I've got another gel printed page here. Now this was actually tissue paper and this was actually to clean a lot off my gel plate. So the edges, the paint is actually peeling up off that but I do want to incorporate some of that into it. Now this is wet strength tissue paper so you know it is very strong. If this was the kind of gift tissue paper, wrapping tissue paper etc it would require a bit of more careful handling. So you know very much the kind of orange on the base layer and adding this piece that has got kind of orange and grey on it. Now where there wasn't paint on the tissue it becomes very translucent and I will still be able to see some of the pattern, some of those marks sitting below that. But again same kind of process making sure that it's properly adhered. I go slightly more gently over the tissue paper although as I say because this is a wet strength tissue paper you know it is fairly robust and already I like the way that that is starting to look. So just going to add another couple of pieces on. 
I take this long strip here, I just think that that will look good. I like the kind of grey colour that's on there. So same process, a bit of the matte medium onto the base card and then a bit onto the back of the tissue paper. It was proving a little bit tricky there, but that's okay. Grabbed it in the end and then just making sure that it's fully adhered. I just strap those little ends round to the other side because I know that I'm going to be doing the back of that anyway. And again, where the paper uh, didn't have any paint on it, it simply becomes translucent. So adding one more little bit, just looking at where that might go. This is one of the pieces that actually was from the edge and the paint on it it's kind of lifting a little bit. As I say, that was all that the kind of crusty goodness that you sometimes get on the edge of your gel plate. So what I'm doing here is just dabbing over it with my brush, just trying to get some matte medium on top of the, the kind of crusty bit of the paint, just so it will hopefully stick. If it peels off at a later point, it doesn't really matter. I'll then give this a quick dry and then I'll move on to the back of the page or the other side of the page. I never decide which is the back and which is the front until later. So here I am just finishing off the second side. So very similar to the last side. I don't put the collage in exactly the same place and it's going to have different paint on it and different paint, paint marks. That's fine. That bit was kind of breaking up a little bit, so I was just pressing it down with some of the matte medium just to hold it in place. I dry it again, and then I add some pink. I ended up actually liking those little bits of pink last week, so why not embrace the pink? So just adding some, this was tissue paper that came in gift wrapping. It's not terribly thick. It's not strong like the other tissue paper I was using. But, you know, again, it just adds a little something. I'm not going to put a whole lot on. It does become fairly translucent, so I still get to see those marks underneath. And, uh, yeah, I quite like it. I actually discovered there's more pink around where I am than I thought to begin with, but that's another story for another day. So, again, I'll just give it a quick dry and then I'll do exactly the same on the back. So again, here I am just finishing off the second side. So nothing different in terms of the process on this side to the first. So I've just shortened the sequence. Now at this point, I dry it and then I'm just looking at it alongside my journal. I actually like that page as is. I could live with that, but not up against that page. So I am going to look to do something different, of course. So before I go on to do more with that page, there's something else I want to do. So these were the little pieces that were left over when I cut up my original 12 by 12 page. I'd cut the scrapbooking page into four by five inch pages, so I had these little pieces left over, and I did say I'd be using these at some point, so this is it. So I've got both of these, and basically I'm going to do something similar on these just now as I've done with the back and front of my main pages. I'm going to use these little edges that I'd cut off earlier. There's plenty of paint on these, layering them up where I want to just uh, grab as much of the colour as I can and just making sure that I've covered these over. So just piecing it in place just now and then I'll glue it down. So basically I want these two pieces to look like the main page. So I'm using, that's why I'm using really the kind of off cuts from the gel printed page and I will also use the off cuts or some of the gel printed tissue as well. I just want these to blend in with the main page. So those first bits are down and now I'm just adding a bit of the gel printed tissue. And I will do exactly the same on both pieces, but one of the pieces I will actually do on both sides, albeit I just use the gel printed tissue on the back of one of the pieces. Oh yeah, and adding a bit of pink as well. 
why not? That piece had stuck slightly to my table but that didn't matter because I was going to be covering one of them on the second side anyway and this is the one where I simply put down a piece of the gel printed tissue paper. So get that in place, again make full it's sure it's fully adhered and I will be cutting round the edges later on, yeah, both of them. So with one of them you'll see that I'm tearing a piece off and the piece that I tear off will just go into the scrap bin. I wanted this one to have a, a rough edge on it. And the second one I will just cut round. So just measuring it there because I'm now taking some other scrap pieces of paper. So I am going to be making a little journal to sit within this actual page or attached to this actual page. So I've just taken that piece of scrap paper that was sitting in one of my piles of scrap, now organised partially organised and I'm just working out what size I want to make it based on one of the little rectangles that's there and I'm, I've cut that in two, I've torn it in two and I'm basically going to measure out and see what size I'm going to make the pages. I'll then do the other piece of the scrap paper in exactly the same way. So measure out the pages, fold the pages and I'll have that little piece at the end left over. Once I've got both my little strips measured and folded, I am then going to use this 3-in-1 glue and I'm just going to take that little end bit, I'm going to put some glue on that. My studio was cold, the glue was very difficult to get out but I got there eventually. So plenty of glue on that and then I'm just going to attach it to one of the full pages of the other piece. So you can see at the back there how the two fit together. I used that rather than the matte medium because that glue will hold together a bit quicker than the other. So now looking at my other little piece I'm just going to cut the overhang off that. This is the one that I did on both sides, so I'm just going right around those edges, just cutting them off. And this piece will then form my mini journal cover. So just looking to make sure that my little pages are going to fit in there and just looking at how I am going to attach them to the cover. But before I do that, the next stage is to grunge everything up a little bit. And I'm going to do this in a similar way to how I've done my previous pages, or at least last week's page. I'm going to start by just scraping a little bit of gesso on them. This is just plain white gesso. I don't want it too thick because I want it to dry pretty quickly. As I said, my studio is quite cool. Uh, I did have some heating on but you know trying not to make it too thick but you'll see I score into it there that's just something that I like to do I think that just adds lots of texture to things so spreading it across the three piece, uh, pieces my page my journal cover and this little bit that you'll find out in a minute what that's for I do the main page on both sides. The other two pieces I don't do anything more to. They only need to be done on the one side. So once I've got the gesso on place then I'm going to do as I did last week and use my sepia ink. And I'm going to use this on all three pieces and I will use my bottle of water, my spray bottle, just to spread it out a little bit and I'll dab with my brush, I'll let it move across and into the grooves on the gesso, just using my brush to dab it in but really trying to get them fully covered. 
letting one drip on to the other and going right round the edges. And I loved how these were starting to look. They do, of course, dry a little bit lighter. The layers can be built up, but, you know, if I wasn't filming this, I had more time, then I would build the layers up more. But obviously I wanted to get on and get this page finished. So the back of the little book cover or the inside, I do actually go over that as well just to grunge the inside up. But I absolutely love that. And, you know, I will cover the main page with ink in the same way. When drying, I just was dabbing the edges of that long strip and the back of it into the wet ink, just so that some of it would pick up, so that when I come to use this, none of the white edges show. So you can see there, dried a little bit lighter. And of course, I'll then do the other side. After putting the ink down on the other side, giving it a spray, I got a little bit of sponge and I just used a sponge to then go around the edges of what will become the little concertina book and I actually just put some of it onto the blank side of the pages just so that it wasn't stark white. So going around the edges and just covering. I wasn't looking to cover it completely not concerned about that, but just getting a little bit of colour down and onto it. I'm now going to attach the pages of my little concertina journal to its cover. So I'm taking that other little piece at the end, it's only, I don't know, hardly half an inch, and I'm just going to use a three-in-one glue, put some glue onto it, and then I will attach it to the back cover. So just got the little edge there and just folding it over and putting it to the right up to the middle of the front cover. So just where the fold is, just checking that it's roughly placed, folding the pages, checking that they all fold in well and there is the little mini journal. So I'm now going to look at how I'm going to attach this to the page. First off though I want to look at how the two pages are going to sit together and decide which is going to be my back and which is going to be my front. Originally I was going to create a little pocket along the bottom but I liked a lot of the texture there so I'm now looking at creating a pocket down the side. But the way I go in the end is to create a band rather than a pocket. Now the journal is quite thick, it's going to stick up a bit, but I'm okay with that. So here I'm just looking at how it would all kind of fit together. It will make this page quite chunky, but actually I like that. So I decide to make a vertical band into which the little book will fit, but I realise that because the book, although small, is chunky for the page, there will need to be a kind of gap. I can't just put this totally flat down, so I'm going to have to make sure that there is sufficient space for the book to fit in. But before I do any more gluing, I am going to use the gold paint that I have in previous weeks along with the same stencil and just add some little bits of gold to the page and to the band and the front and back of the mini journal just to allow them to fit in again with previous week's pages. So just going to go across all of those, looking at different bits of the stencil just to bring interest to each bit. And what this will also do, having created the band 
and the book cover in a similar way to the front and back of this page. It will integrate it, it almost allows it to become a hidden little mini journal within the journal, within the journal page. So just getting some gold stenciling marks down on each of the pieces. And of course I do the main page both back and front. Now after lifted the stencil here some of the gesso from earlier must have still been a little bit wet so there's a couple of light spots there. All I do is to put some ink onto my sponge and just dab them over and that will disguise those little flaws just where the gesso has managed to break through. I then go around the edges of my page with a mix of the sepia ink and the gold paint just to make sure there's no white edges on show. I now want to attach this week's page to last week's. The difference this week is I'm going to make the binding a little bit shorter because I don't want to lose my tiger on this side or my fox on the other side. So I'm just measuring. It means that it won't look, look exactly the same as previous pages. I don't mind that because at some point I might do a different fabric for binding anyway. So I've made it a little bit more narrow and a little bit shorter. So I use the three-in-one glue to attach both pieces, one on this side and one on the other. Now it's time to attach my band. I want to look at the rough width of the binding for this page and next week's and I look at whether or not the band should sit on top of it or to the side of it. Still looking at it being a band rather than a pocket. Deciding whether or not it just needs to be that little bit away from the binding. Once I decide on the position I use a 3-in-1 glue I put some glue on the top of the band and again at the bottom of the band. I glue it in place over the little journal because I want to make sure that I don't glue it totally flat and therefore not leave enough space for the journal to fit into. So here's how the journal's shaping up so far. So you can see you can already stand it up, have the front cover, inside cover, page one, page two and page three and I'm loving all the pages. I think this week's with the addition of the mini journal, I, I really love that. I love the detail that's on it, the colours and you know I'll be able to come and sit and do some work in the mini journal as well and that's it's a fun thing but I can also journal in it. Love the texture created with the gesso and of course the grunging up with the sepia ink which is all over my hands and fingers. That will slip in there nicely. I will leave the little journal out overnight just to give all the pages time to cure. Otherwise I would be slightly concerned about the two sticking together. But that's it for this week. I will be back on Wednesday with my scrappy tidy up and if you want to see another journal video meantime check this one out. Bye for now.